Section 9.2, graphs of polar equations. Graph the following. R equals 5 cosine of theta. These are circles, so we kind of have to know uh, a little bit of how, wh what this function looks like uh, before we graph it, because we're, we're only going to plot a few points. So you must know that these are going to be circles. Now, if we had the equation y equals x plus 2, then if we wanted to make an xy chart, we'd pick x's and we'd find the y's. So we'd pick an x, let's say x was 5, we'd add 2, so we'd pick 5, y would be 7. We're going to do the same thing with these equations, except that we're going to pick thetas and we're going to find out what r is. Now, we need to find out, well, what are we going to pick for theta? And to decide what we're going to pick for theta is we're going to take the coefficient of this theta right there, multiply it times 2, and then count by pi over 2's. But this graph will finish in pi radians, so we only have to go to pi, counting by pi over 2's. So we go 0, pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, which is pi. We're only going to use three points to graph these, but we just have to know that these are circles. Now, if I plug 0 in for theta, cosine of 0 is 1. 1 times 5 is 5. Pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. 0 times 5 is 0. Cosine of pi is negative 1. And negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. So let's pot, uh, plot the point uh, 0, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right there. Pi over 2 is 0. So now we've gone halfway around the circle. Now if we plotted a whole bunch of points, it would start forming a circle. We just have to know it's a circle. And then uh, at uh, pi, we're at negative 5. So pi this way, we're the other way. We're over at negative 5 right here. So there's the other half of the circle. This is on the right side of x because on the unit circle, cosine is x. So over here, when we have negative 5 cosine of theta, now we're going to be on the left side of the x-axis. So let's pick our thetas. We have our r. 0, pi over 2, pi. The cosine of 0 is 1, but then 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And then the cosine of pi is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 5 gives us 5. So 0 is negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So really, we're going along 0, but in the opposite direction. Pi over 2 is 0. So now we've completed half the circle. And then when we get to pi, uh, we are back at, at, we're at 5. We're back where we started. So there's, uh, there's the full circle. And it only takes pi radians to graph the entire circle. Here we have 5 sine, and this is a circle, but instead of going along the x-axis, we're going to go along the y-axis. So uh, we start at, uh, well, let's see where we start. Uh, we'd have theta and r, 0, pi over 2, pi. So we plug 0 in for sine is 0. We're starting at 0, 0, pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. 1 times 5 is 5. And then sine of pi is 0, so we're back to 0. So we go from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 at pi over 2. There's half the circle. And then we're back to 0 for the other half of the circle. And so now we're along the positive y-axis uh, because on the unit circle, sine is y, and we have created the circle. Now with negative 5 sine, we need to go down to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. And this would be the circle for negative 5 sine of theta. Graph the following. We have r equals 3 plus 3 cosine theta. These are limassons, and they are a special type of limasson. They are cardioids. And the reason they are cardioids is when cosine is negative 1, we'll have negative 1 times 3, that's negative 3, and the r will be 0. We'll get back to the pole. So if a limasson uh, touches the pole, this is a cardioid. Now let's take a closer look at this. We have theta. We have r. We're going to count by pi over 2's. We're going to double the coefficient. But these limassons, they finish in 2 pi. If you just graph the pi, you're only going to get half of the graph. 0, pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, that's pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 4 pi over 2. So we're still counting by pi over 2's. The cosine of 0 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3, and then 3 plus 3 is 6. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. 0 times 3 is 0, plus 3 is 3. 
cosine of pi is negative 1, and so we have 3 minus 3. Cosine is negative 1 times 3. It gives a negative 3. Here we have the 0. That right there tells me that it's a cardioid because it's going to touch the pole. 3 pi over 2. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is uh, 0. So we're at 3, and then with 2 pi, we're back to 6. So 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Pi over 2 is 3. 1, 2, 3. Uh, pi is 0, so that's where it touches the pole. 3 pi over 2 is 1, 2, 3, and then we're back to 6. So this graph goes a little bit wider than this point. It touches the pole, bounces off, goes a little wider, and then back to where we started. And that's supposed to be symmetric uh, over the x-axis. So that's about as close as I can get it just by doing it freehand. Uh, now we have... 4 minus uh, 4 sine, you can see how this one over here, that's off to the, to the positive x-axis side because cosine is, it dictates x. And then this one right here, this should be along, uh, the, the long end should be along the y-axis. Let's see if that happens. We have theta and r, uh, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So that's really counting by pi over 2s. If I plug 0 in for sine, we get 0, so that's 4, and we'd have 4 minus 0. Uh, pi over 2 is 1, so 4 minus 4 is 0. That tells me it's a cardioid because we get an R that is 0. <clears throat> uh, plug in pi for sine, that is uh, 0, so we get 4. 3 pi over 2, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, so that becomes 8 because you get 4 plus 4, that's 8. And then 2 pi is back to 4. So let's plot this. Uh, 0, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, pi over 2 is 0, so it touches the pole there. Uh, pi is 1, 2, 3, 4. 3 pi over 2 is 8. That's all the way down to the bottom. Let me scroll down a little bit. There we go. That's down to 8, and uh, that should do it. So if I start here down at the bottom, I should go a little wider than this point, bounce off the pole, go a little wider, and then come around like that. Now let's, let's graph this, before we continue, let's graph this on the calculator, see how to do this. How about the 4 minus 4 sign? Uh, we need to go to mode. I need to turn this into a polar equations. And you can be in radians or degrees, but most of the time we graph these in radians. Let's go to y equals. It's not y equals anymore, it's r equals. And then we have 4 minus 4 sign of the X button, which is now the theta button. And if we go zoom 6, we're using the standard window, and there is the cardioid that touches the pole, goes down to 8. Two minus three cosine, these are lemasons with an inner loop. And the reason it's an inner loop is because when cosine is positive 1, we're going to get 2 minus 3, that's negative 1. So if the R is ever negative, uh, for our purposes, this is going to be a limason with an inner loop. Now let's double the coefficient of theta, and that's what we'll count by. So we have theta and R, 0, 1 half, 2 halves, 3 halves, and 4 halves. Uh, so let's plug 0 in, cosine of 0 is 1, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Uh, we get the negative right away. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so that'll be 2. Cosine of pi is negative 1, that'll be 5, because negative 1 times negative 3, that'll give you a 2 plus 3. 3 pi over 2 is 2, and 2 pi, uh, that's back to being negative 1. So if we're going to go 0 radians, we have to go to negative 1, which is back here. It's in the opposite direction. Pi over 2 is 2. Pi is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 3 pi over 2 is 2. Now I like to start with the, the biggest r, and then it's going to loop around. It's going to go a little wider than this. It will cut through the origin. It'll loop around, cut through the pole, and then go a little wider than this point and come all the way around. So there is a limason with an inner loop. Why does it have an inner loop? Uh, the key is right there, negative 1. We have an r that is negative. And uh, you can see we're along the x-axis because we have cosine. Cosine is x on the unit circle. This one should be along the y-axis. The wider side should be on the y-axis. So let's go theta r, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, 
when we plug 0 in, sine of 0 is 0, that's 3. Pi over 2 is 1, so that's going to be 8. Pi is uh, 0, so that's 3. 3 pi over 2, that would be a negative 1, so 3 minus 5 is a negative 2, and then 2 pi is back to 3. So 0, 1, 2, 3. Pi over 2 is 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way up here. Then pi is 1, 2, 3. Uh, the 3 pi over 2, that's the negative 2. That's going to cause the inner loop right there. So let's start with the longest r up there at the top. We'll go a little wider than this. Cut through the pole. There's the loop. Cut through the pole. Go a little wider than that and come on around. So there is a limousan with an inner loop. Uh, how do we know it's an inner loop? We have a negative r. These are limassons that are dimpled. And notice that the biggest cosine can be as 1, making this 2. Uh, so 3 minus 2, that's going to be a positive. All of our r's are going to be positive on this one. This 3 is smaller than, now you got to pay attention to this, the 3 is smaller than twice this. It's bigger than 2, but it's not twice that or more. Now because of that, we're going to have a dimpled limassan. So let's graph this. We have um, theta and r, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. So plug 0 in, uh, we get cosine of 0 is 1, 3 minus 2 is 1, pi over 2 is 0, so that's 3, cosine of pi is negative 1, that's going to be 5, 3 pi over 2, cosine of that is 0, so we get 3, and then 2 pi is... Uh, 1, so we get 1. So at 0, we're at 1. And uh, pi over 2 is 3. 1, 2, 3. Pi is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And uh, 3 pi over 2 is 3. And then we're back to 1. Now, because this is not 4 or more, it's going to be a dimpled limousine. So we can start here. We're going to loop around. We're going to dimple to it, to that point right there. Come around, go a little wider, and there is a uh, dimpled limousine right there. And of course the wide end is along the x-axis because it's cosine. Uh, let's get this one here. We have theta r 0 pi over 2 pi 3 pi over 2 2 pi. That's counting by pi over 2's. Sine of 0 is uh, 0 so we have 4 and a half, 4.5. Pi over 2, the sine of pi over 2 is 1 so we have 1.5. Uh, pi Sine of pi is 0, so that's 4.5 for pi. 3 pi over 2, that's negative 1, so we have 7.5. And, and then 2 pi is 0, so that's back to 4.5. Notice how all the values are positive, so we won't touch the pole. We won't go through the pole. Uh, so they're all positive, and because 4.5 is not 6 or more, it's going to be dimpled. It's less than 6. But it, this is still bigger than 3. 0, 4 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. Pi over 2 is 1 and a half. Uh, pi is 4 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half right there. And then uh, two pi, uh, 3 pi over 2 is 7 and a half. So 1, 2, 3, 4, well, that's about right there. Right there. Uh, so this is going to be dimpled. We'll go a little wider. Dimple. A little wider. Come on around. And notice how it's along. The wide end is along the y-axis because we have sine. And, and again, these are finishing in 2 pi. How about convex? Notice that 5 is 4 or more, meaning it's twice that. Twice that or more. When that happens, when it's doubled, when this doubles this number right here, uh, we have a convex limousine. Uh, so let's get uh, theta and r. We have 0, pi over 2. We have pi. 3 pi over 2, and then 4 pi over 2. Cosine of 0 is 1, so we have 7. Pi over 2 is 0, that's 5. Cosine of pi is uh, negative 1, that gives us 3. 3 pi over 2 is 0, that's 5. And 2 pi, uh, we're back to 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Pi over 2 is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pi is 1, 2, 3. We have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 3 pi over 2, and then we're back to 7. Well, this now is going to be a convex limousine because 5 is more than twice 2. So let's start at the wide end. We'll go a little wider than this. And now instead of going dimpled to it, we're going slightly convex. 
to that point and then come on around. Over on this one, 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Plug 0 in, sine of 0 is 0, so that's 6. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, so that's going to be 4. Uh, pi is 0, so that's 6. 3 pi over 2, <coughs> that's negative 1, so we're going to have 8. And then 2 pi is back to 6. So we have 6. Pi over 2 is 4. 3, 4. Uh, pi is uh, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're down at 8. And then we're back to 6 over here. Now because that is 4 or more, it's twice 2, this is going to be a convex limason. So we circle around, go a little wider, go convex to it, go a little wider, and then we're back to where we started.